Welcome to Capital Baptist Church and welcome to our brand new teaching series starting today called Go! Actions That Transform Lives. That's right, the new series we're starting today uh, is that word go, G-O, God told us to go. And what we're going to talk about are actions uh, that we can do to transform uh, lives. So welcome to this opening message today as we talk about the first action, and that is go with God. Go with God. Hey, you try to go without God, you're not going to be very effective, are you? You're going to to fail. Uh, When we think about going, uh, we have to make sure we're going uh, with God. Uh, So I'm excited about sharing this message with you. Welcome as we talk about this very important topic. So as we begin, I want to talk about uh, this series. And I want to mention that Jesus' final word to his disciples And to all of us today is the word go. I mean, last words are meaningful words, right? I mean, uh, if you have an opportunity to kind of know what your last words might be uh, on this earth, I guarantee you, uh, you would spend a good amount of time thinking about uh, what you want to say. Well, Jesus, uh, he knew these were his uh, last words, and he wanted to make sure that he got across the message that was most important. And that message was found in two letters, go, go. He has called us to go, listen to me, across the sea, yes, but also across the street. He he wants us to go, but listen, yes, he wants us to go uh, across the sea. Uh, He wants us to to, uh, either be a missionary or send a missionary uh, across the sea, or he wants all of us to be a missionary in the sense of going across the street. You see, the command is found in Matthew 28, 19a, and this is our key verse uh, for the series, where Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. So in this teaching series, as we look at that important uh, commandment that God has given us, we're going to discover the mission that God has for you and has for me, and how living out that mission, this is what I'm most excited about, brings purpose and eternal value to your life. Did you hear me? This series is going to be so helpful to you because it's going to add a a sense of, of, of purpose to your life, and more importantly, it's going to add eternal value uh, to uh, your life. So it's exciting to think about what God can do through every one of us if we will just be going for him. Well, today let's talk about go, go with God. And today we're going to be looking here in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Where Jesus said this, Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. What an incredible statement uh, that Jesus spoke here. And we call this passage the Great Commission. You ever heard of that before? If you've been in church a while, maybe you've heard it before. The Great Commission. And listen, it's called great because it contains the final words of of Jesus. We call it great because, like I said, these are the final words of Jesus. I mean, I mean, again, I can't emphasize enough. If I know when I'm about to die and I only have a, you know, one more sentence to give or whatever, one more conversation, I guarantee you I'm going to, be ma- I'm going to make it count, right? And Jesus had that opportunity. He knew this was it. And so he gave us the great commission. And then it's called commission because it is Jesus who gives us a mission. We call it the Great Commission because Jesus gives us uh, a mission. So here's the bottom line. You cannot live a great life without living out the Great Commission. Let me say that again. You cannot. It's absolutely impossible to live a great life without living out the Great Commission. 
So folks, listen, let's get pumped up. Let's get excited over these next weeks as we learn how to live this out uh, each and every day. And so as we begin, the first action is to go with God, to go with God. I mean, as we go, listen, we're, we can't go on our own effort. We can't go in our own uh, strength. Uh, we have to have him with us, right? We have to have him uh, with us. And then we're going to talk about uh, what that means uh, from this passage. But before we do that, I want to go a little deeper and talk to you about what is the Great Commission. I just want to just pause here before we get into these uh, steps here to help us uh, with how to go with God. Let me just highlight a little bit about uh, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. The first thing I want to highlight is the little part that says, all authority, all authority has been given to me. It's important to realize that, you know, this is coming down uh, from the ultimate authority. God himself is giving us this command. This is not a suggestion. This is not an option. Uh, this isn't take it or leave it. Uh, it is a sacred commandment. He has all the authority. We, we are totally accountable uh, to God, and he has given us uh, this commandment. And then he says, go therefore. Go therefore. And, and, and what that word go actually means is as you are going. In the original Greek language, it actually means, means as you're going. It, it assumes that we're going to be on the go because it's a sin. Right? It's a sin not to be on the go. So be on the go. But listen, know what you're going about. And, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to make disciples. We're, we're trying to raise up fully devoted followers of Jesus. I mean, that's what it's all about. Not just decisions, but disciples. Yes, people have to become uh, uh, saved before they can become a disciple, but just getting people uh, to accept Jesus, that's not enough. That, that's not obeying uh, the command. We're, we're to raise up fully devoted followers uh, of Jesus. And we're to do it, the next word I want to focus on is nations. In fact, it says all the nations. And what that means is people groups. Every people group, not, not, don't just think, okay, let's get the gospel to Kenya or whatever. Yes, get the gospel to Kenya. But within Kenya, you know, and I'm not an expert on Kenya, probably picked a bad example, okay? But, but I know, just like anywhere else, uh, Kenya has lots of different subgroups in it, and those are people groups. And, and, we, and we have to go not just to Kenya, we have to go to all the di different uh, people groups within uh, that one nation. And the Bible tells us uh, baptizing. Those that accept Jesus need to be baptized. It says teaching them. We've we, we got to teach them the Word of God. How much of the Word of God? It says we've got to teach them to observe or obey all of the commandments. That, that means we have to teach the whole counsel of God from Genesis to Revelation. We have to be taught to obey all of God's uh, Word. And then I love this last part. I am with you. I am with you. Listen, when we go with God, uh, he will be with us. In fact, that's our main verse for today. Uh, Matthew 28, 20, where Jesus said, Teaching them observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So go with God. He, he, he's going to be with us. He's going to be with us. But how? How do you go with God? I mean, just think about that. You say, Pastor, Steve, that sounds good. I, I want God to go with me. I want to go with God. I mean, he's the one that gave the commandment. I'm, I want to make sure he's with me. Well, how can you do that? Well, number one, accept God's power to go. Accept God's power to go. So where is the power coming from? It's coming from Jesus, okay? Jesus, Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. He has all the authority. And what that word authority means is power. The word authority means power. And listen, have you ever thought about how powerful God is? You ever just, you know, when you think, okay, God is powerful. 
Well, how powerful is he? Okay, obviously I could do the whole sermon on this or even a sermon series. But just let me give you a couple things to think about. When, when, when it says he's going to be with you, number one, think about uh, that he is the, the creator God. I mean, he has all authority in that he created uh, everything. Uh, I love Psalm 33, 8 through 9. I love these two verses. Let all the earth fear the Lord, let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Why? For he spoke. He spoke and, at, and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Wow. I mean, it says that we as God's people on this earth, all the inhabitants of the world, we ought to stand in awe of God, stand in awe of Almighty God. And one of the reasons we ought to stand in awe is he spoke the creation and it was done. He commanded it. And it stood fast. I mean, just, just look around you. Look at God's creation. Look at, the, look at the sky. Look at the clouds. Look at the stars. Look at the grass. Look, look at the mountains. Look, look at, look at uh, the flowers. Look at the nature all around you. Look at you. Look at me. I mean, what a miracle uh, the body is. The, the, it's a miraculous thing. And, and listen, he did that. He did that. He, he's an all-powerful creator God. And then also we see his power in that uh, he resurrected from the grave. Uh, Romans 8, 11 says, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give, you, uh, will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. I mean, here it's talking about two things. One is talking about that Jesus rose from the grave. God's Spirit uh, raised Jesus from the dead. And then it says that same Spirit, the same Holy Spirit who resurrected from Jesus from the grave lives inside of us. I mean, just think about that. The power of the resurrection resides in you and resides in me. Accept God's power to go. God will give you power to go. He will give you power to go. And you know where a lot of that power comes from? The gospel of Christ is the power of God. The gospel of Christ is the power of God. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Let us not be ashamed of the gospel. Don't, don't let fear hold you back. Go with God. Don't, don't let fear control you. We have a, a, a powerful message, and that message is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, the gospel, the good news, is what it means. Good news. Jesus died for our sin. He died for our sin so that we wouldn't have to die and go to hell. He was buried. And listen, on the third day, he rose out of that grave victorious uh, over uh, hell and victorious over death. There's power. In fact, that word power, the power of God, it, it's literally the word we use for dynamite. It's the dynamite of God. When you think of, when you think of dynamite, you think of something explosive, something powerful. Well, the gospel is just that. Hey, how to go with God? Accept God's power. To go. Number two, believe God is with you when you go. Believe God is with you when you go. Matthew 28, 20 B, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. What, what a promise. What a promise. I am with you always. I am with you always. When, when you make a decision to be obedient, to go, to go as he has commanded us to go. God says, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. God will be with you to provide the courage you need. You know, one of the things that we holds us back, including me sometimes, I have to admit sometimes fear controls me. You know, and, I, and I'm not as bold a witness as I should be. But let me tell you something. We need to realize that he can give us courage. In fact, Hebrews 13, 6 says, so we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. 
What can man do to me? What a verse. So we may boldly say, let's boldly say, church, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. God will give you uh, the power you need uh, to help you go with his presence to provide courage. And then God will be with you to provide words. You know, a lot of times we're just not sure exactly what to say, right? We, we, want, we want to go, we want, we want to tell people about Jesus, but, but we're just not quite sure what to say. And, uh, and I love Jeremiah 1.9. Uh, God made a promise to Jeremiah, and this, com- uh, this promise uh, is available to us as well. And here's what God says. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Jeremiah, a great prophet of God. And, uh, and uh, he uh, testifies here that God said to him, listen, I'm going to give you the words to say. And, and, and his presence will give you the words to say. You just have to let him lead you and guide you and, and, and direct you. Believe God is with you when you go. And when you believe that, God will, will provide you courage and God will provide you the words that you need to go. And then number three, care enough for people to go. Now, now we're getting down to the bottom line, okay? This, this is what we all struggle with. That's apathy. I struggle with that sometimes, just apathy. I got, you know, I got, I got so much to be concerned about, about my own life, my own issues, my own, my own problems, my own challenges, my own priorities, and, you know, I just kind of forget about everything else. And really what it comes down to is care enough for people to go. Care enough for people to go. Matthew 28, 19, B through 20, A says, And make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. So earlier, I focused on the words disciples, uh, of all nations, baptizing and teaching. I believe those were the words I highlighted, particularly make disciples, baptizing and teaching. What I didn't emphasize was make disciples. I didn't emphasize baptizing them. I, I didn't emphasize teaching them. Who are disciples? Who are the them? You know who it is? It's people. People that need the Lord. It's, it's about the people. It's not just about the task. Yes, the task is necessary and important, but listen, it's about helping people. It's about caring for people. Do we care for them? Do, do, do we really care for them? You see, the reality is everyone is going to die and face the judgment of God. You're never going to meet anybody that's not going to die. I mean, 100%, right? We're, we're, all of us are going to die. But what happens after death is we face the judgment of God. The Bible's very clear, Hebrews 9, 27. And as it's appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. So, you know, there's no reincarnation. By the way, that's kind of a side note here, okay? You're not going around once. I mean, you're not going around more than once. You're going around one time, all right? You're going to die one time, okay? And, and at that point in time, when you face your appointment with death, and, and you will face an appointment with death, after this is the judgment. After this is the judgment. And people that know Jesus and are saved are going to heaven and people that don't know Jesus are going to go to hell. And, and that's the truth. That's the loving truth. Okay, The loving truth is to tell people the honest truth. Loving truth is honest truth. And, and that is the truth. Hell, listen, is a real, eternal destination and a place of suffering. Hell is real, folks. It's a real destination. And it's a place of, of suffering. And there's many verses we could talk about. Uh, in fact, it's true that actually Jesus taught more, taught more about hell than he taught about heaven. Now, he said, he said a lot about heaven. Don't get me wrong. But if you add it up, all the scriptures Jesus spoke on heaven and all the scriptures you spoke on, he spoke on hell, hell is more content. 
I mean, Jesus, you know, some people say, well, I don't like an hellfire brimstone preacher. I've heard people say that before. Well, you must not like Jesus too much, okay? Uh, because Jesus, uh, you know, spoke uh, clearly. Because again, loving words are honest words. And the honest truth is without Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to die and go to hell. And this is what the Lord said in Matthew 25. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And then verse 46, and these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Hell is a real eternal destination, and it's a place of suffering. And so here's my question. Here's my question. Is there going to be anyone in heaven because of you? Is there going to be anyone in heaven because of you? That's a, that's a great question for me to ask myself. And, and really it comes down to, do you care? It, you listen, care. People, people, are, are, people are moved when you care, right? When, when people see that, hey, this matters. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm telling you is, is the, the truth. And, and, and you share it uh, from, a, from a heart of concern and a heart of love. It makes a difference. And the next point under point three here is God wants uh, to use you to rescue the perishing and care for the dying. Uh, God wants to use you to rescue the perishing and care for the dying. And if you've been in church a long time like me, uh, I'm kind of taking off on an old school hymn there. Unfortunately, we don't sing these songs as much as we used to, okay? And there's one called Rescue the Perishing, Care for the Dying. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. And God wants to use you to do just that. Romans 10, 13 through 14, I love this, says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a fact. You say, well, I'm not sure, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm saved. And, and, and I, I cannot assume today as I look into this camera that every single person looking at me right now is saved. Maybe you're today, you're saying Honestly, Pastor, I've never been saved myself. I've never asked Jesus to save me. What can I do? Well, I gave you the good news, right? The good news, Jesus died for your sin. That's right. He died for your sin. And listen, he died so you wouldn't have to die and pay for your sin in hell. He substituted. Uh, he was your substitute. He took your place. But listen, he was buried. He died. You better be sure of that. He died. But here's the great news. He came out of that grave victorious over sin, over death, over hell. And, and what the Bible says, if you'll call on the Lord, you can be saved. That means you have to ask him to save you. You have to believe in what he did. You have to turn from your sin, put your trust in Jesus to save you. What a great message. Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed, and how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear, listen, how shall they hear without a preacher? Let me read that again. It's a series of questions. It's a, Paul's making a logical argument for going. He, Paul was a very um, astute uh, person, very, very smart person. He, went, he actually went to the best Jewish, Jewish schools of his day. Uh, he, he was a very intelligent man. And he's using reasoning with us here. He says, listen, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Okay, how, how can they call on somebody they haven't believed in? And the qu second question is, how shall they believe in him of whom they've not heard? How can they believe this unless they hear it? And then here's the third question. How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a preacher? See, God has a, a plan. And the plan is... People telling people about Jesus. And when you see that term, how shall they hear without a preacher, don't get all caught up in, in the occupation of a preacher. Say, Pastor Steve, you're a preacher. That, that's talking about you. No, it just means proclaiming. You've got to proclaim the gospel. And God, God didn't say 
preachers go. God didn't say missionaries go. God said just go, okay? He's talking to every single believer, uh, go. How shall they hear without a preacher? And, you know, every time I see this, and, and you've ever heard me preach very much, you know I mention this uh, uh, quite often because I think it's astounding to me. I mean, just think about, okay, we got the most important message in the world, you know, the gospel, right? And, and just think about, okay, God had to decide, okay, how am I going to get this gospel out? And, you know, I think about this. I don't know if you ever think about things like this, but I think about this. I think, okay, God, you could have written it on the sky. You know, he could have. Remember, he's the creator, God. And, and we, he could have put John 3.16 up in the sky. I don't know if you ever heard that verse or not. It goes like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God, God could have just written that right across the sky. And every person in every generation would have been able to just look up in the sky and it would have said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But God, in his wisdom, decided not to do it that way. He says, you know what, how I'm going to do this? People telling people. People telling people. I'm going to use people who are saved. I'm going to use my children those that are born again, those that are saved, and they're going to go and tell their unsaved people, their unsaved friends, their unsaved neighbors, their unsaved co-workers, people across the street and people across the sea. This is God's plan. This is God's plan. So how do you go with God? Accept God's power to go. Number two, believe God is with you when you go. Number three, care enough for people to go. And then number four, decide to go today and every day. Today we're talking about action number one for going. Action number one is go with God. And today I'm going to ask you, will you, go, will you decide today to go with God? Decide to go with God. Decide to go locally by participating in what I'm going to call the capital care. The capital care. So during this time... As we're talking about uh, you know, missionaries going across the sea, I'm going to challenge you to go across the street. I, 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 want, I want us to get involved locally in CARE. And CARE is going to stand for contact and reach everyone. Listen, as we're going through this time in our church, and you're going to meet and hear some awesome missionaries, and they are going across the sea. Praise the Lord. You know why they're going? Because God told them to go. God didn't tell me to go, and I, I don't think he told you to go, but he told me to go across the street right here in this local community, right here where I live. And I want you to commit that you're going to be a faithful witness right now. Mark 16, 15 says, And Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. What does that mean? Every person. The people across the sea need to hear about Jesus, and the people across the street need to hear about Jesus. And then decide to go globally by committing to our faith promise missionary offering. So during this time, you're going to be hearing about the work capital is doing in missions. And some of the missionaries we already support. And, we've, and some of the missionaries we support, we've been supporting for many years. Some we've been supporting a few years. You're also going to meet some missionaries we currently do not support. We do not financially support them on a monthly basis, but we sure would love to. We sure would love to. And the way we fund our missionaries' outreach is through what's called the Faith Promise Missionary Offering. And what this is, it's an offering over and above your tithing. I urge you to tithe, give at least a tithe, 10% to the general fund. This is an offering over and above that. And I want you to be praying about it, all right? Because a little bit later on, uh, I'm going to be asking you to make a specific commitment. But right now, I'm just going to ask you to be praying about it. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 15b through 16a, that as your faith is increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. Hey, we want to see the gospel preached to regions beyond us. That's called missionaries. 
That's called missionaries. And, and, and as they have faith to go, and we need to have faith to give. So let's be praying about this. Let's be asking God to do this. But today, I want us to focus on this first action. The first action, okay, that will transform lives is go with God. Just say, okay, this is God's commandment. I'm going with God, okay? I'm going to do what God wants me to do. I'm going to do what he wants me to do. And listen, that's the first action. That's the most important action. That's the basic action. This is the first step of obedience. Hey, go. Go with God.